ancient Romanian beliefs and traditions present the bear as a special animal which deserves to be king of the forests, not only because of its physical power, but because of its wisdom. The ancient Finns believed that a human soul resided in a bear. Indigenous societies of North America and Northern Eurasia share a seemingly uniform belief that this elusive creature is endowed with supernatural qualities. In each culture, the bear is recognized on some level as the archetypal messenger to the supernatural world. The bear's soul was believed to be able to move freely between the natural world and the other world. There is an ancient belief that the bear is in communication with the Lord of the mountains and with the sky. And certainly from time immemorial, the bear has been surrounded by an aura that enjoins caution and respect. Was the bear the first god of people? Mounting evidence suggests the existence of a bear cult as early as 80,000 years ago. Is it a myth or is it a reality? It was a time when the bear was comfortable in his dark cave. Caves are corridors in time, preserving for posterity the passing of the animal. It was a time when reindeer wandered through Central and Eastern Europe. The cave bear lived in Eurasia until the end of the last ice age. He shared the lands, forests, mountains and caves with the Neanderthal people. They have a different uh, uh, behavior and sometimes quite human behavior right. that is that from from yes from this is the supposition that uh, that people consider bear not like a normal animal consider like a sort of brother or so yes, and right, from so here come a very complex prehistoric spirituality yeah. related with the cave yeah. bear in the changing fauna the cave bear died out completely 10,000 years ago leaving behind many unanswered questions as enigmatic as the bones left behind. The cave bear was the biggest bear that ever lived, the king of the fauna in the Carpathian Mountains. So the cavern era regele pentru că era atât de puternic că n-avea adversar. A avut un destin straniu, bietul urs de cavernă, pentru că era împărat necontestat în timpul glaciațiunilor, când, când practic nu avea dușman natural, un animal atât de mare și de puternic. Neandertalienii, când erau hămesiți primăvara, cutezau să doboare exemplarele mai tinere. The cult of the bear dates back from a time when humans and bears shared the same caves. Avem sau nu avem dovezi ale existenței unui cult al ursului de cavernă în peșterile din România? O descoperire cu totul excepțională care revigorează reluarea ideii uh, cultului ursului de peșteră în Paleolitic a fost făcută de colegul și prietenul Cristian Lascul în Peștera Rece, unde patru cranii sunt într-o poziție extrem de interesant așezate și care beneficiază de o datare uh, absolută uh, de invidiat, adică peste 80.000 de ani vechime a crustei stalagmitice în care erau prinse craniile respective. Una dintre situațiile care ne-ar putea îndreptăți să credem în așa ceva se află într-o peșteră greu accesibilă, chiar foarte greu accesibilă.
Pornind înainte pe galerie, am început să văd pe podea niște arici. Erau niște ghemotoace rotunjite, sferoidale, din care ieșeau cristale. Foarte intrigat, m-am uitat cu atenție și mi-am dat seama că, de fapt, erau cranii de urs, nu de mari dimensiuni, toate acoperite de calcit și de cristal. Ce am numit noi mai târziu uh, uh, cimitirul urșilor, într-o zonă bogată în oseminte de urs. În unele locuri erau multe îngrămădite, în timp ce în alte locuri erau izolate. Mi-am dat seama că predominau cranile și oasele provenind de la exemplare tinere. N-am prea văzut cranii mari, foarte puțin. Now the controversy, I got to ask you this. The controversy over the cold cave, where you found the arrangement and you're talking about how some people interpret it as human, some people say it could have just been natural. Yes. What do you think? Uh, Seriously, what what what's your instinct? What's your feeling yeah, at I this think point? It was arranged by humans. For 10 years or more, I said nothing. I just discussed with some specialist in anthropology. Here in the very remote section of the gallery is what we named uh, the bear cemetery. There are different bones, probably 48 skulls, but Most of the skulls comes from young bears, even uh, juvenile mm -hmm. bears. Mm -hmm. And we found there three strange formations. Of course, so far, the most interesting is a formation of four skulls with the occipital All the occipital is right. Side forming a sort of imperfect cross. Mm -hmm. yes. Sort of like that, to four like Their that. The size is about 22 till 25 centimeters. Of course, young. So bears. those are young bears. Yes, yeah. right. And they are well in depth in calcite. Mm -hmm. It is clear, nobody touched, nobody removed that skull since very they long time. They were put down, yeah. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. I can't think that I don't know, water removed of the skulls or other bears did that. Here, probably the man was who put in the skulls. Right. But now the question is, what for? I would like to, to, to be sure that they were not Italian there. They did that right. with an uh, intention and that intention was spiritual, not just to put mm -hmm. the, the, the pieces of of bear there to, to eat them later, right. like in a cellar, right. but it was a sort of altar for them. Right, right. Yes, I would like to be like that. But this gets <laughs> to the whole concept, and I know people argue over it, but some people think that there was some kind of, we'll call it a cult. And, uh, showing to some anthropologists and archaeologists and paleontologists, they mm -hmm. suggested us to Uh, look carefully if it's not the case of a cave bear worship. In this museum, there are several things that are extremely interesting. In the first place, there are the martyrs regarding the cult of the man of the sea, identified in the sea of the sea, from Boroșteni, the city of Gorj, unde au fost găsite două cranii așezate spate în spate pe o axă est-vest într-un strat atribuit Musterianului și datat prin carbon 14 la peste 50.000 de ani, dar care din punct de vedere stratigrafic s-ar putea să fie mult mai vechi. Am putea vorbi chiar de o vârstă de peste 80.000 de ani. Global warming at the end of the last ice age led to ecological changes that caused the disappearance of this huge animal. The only thing left behind were its skulls, skeletons, bones, and portraits drawn and painted by prehistoric man in caves. The cave bear must have been an extremely irascible creature whose gigantic strength and thick skin made him almost invincible. 
Discoveries in the Alps at the beginning of the century and in the Apusini Mountains in the 1980s showed there were rituals and cultural practices dedicated to the cave bear. Într-adevăr, încă după în anii 1930, Kirle și Abel, care au făcut cercetări extensive în peșteri cu fosile de urs de cavernă din Austria, au găsit anumite formațiuni de oase și au presupus că oamenii primitivi, care nu se puteau lipsi de un asemenea vânat, de o asemenea sursă de proteine, practicau probabil un fel de ritual de împăcare al ursului și aranjau craniile și uh, membrele în anumite poziții. Au fost și alții după aia care au făcut descoperiri asemănătoare. A fost Bechler, a fost Haas, au fost uh, și alții și fiecare a găsit cumva situații în care oasele erau în poziții ciudate, în asociere cu craniile, eventual uh, înconjurate de niște pietre. Așa s-a iscat ipoteza seducătoare că vânătorii neandertalieni, acum zeci de mii de ani, ar fi avut față de urs un fel de, un fel de venerație, că ursul ar fi aproape primul zeu al umanității. It is believed that the man who undertakes killing a bear in hunting must not cry over his wounds. It is a remnant of an ancient practice in which bear hunting requires the utmost skill and courage. Hunting the bear was believed to be a noble pursuit, a triumph. The animal is regarded with the utmost respect. Au fost niște ofrande aduse unei divinități ale muntelui, cum au presupus unii? I think that historically we have not given Neanderthals enough credit. We're yes. finding that they were actually more advanced than was traditionally believed. Chauvet cave. Right, right. Yes, there is a hole there of a bear. So, you know, a big, uh, a big boulder and mm -hmm. over it is a bear skull. And there are cave, cave bear drawings around. Yeah, yeah. And that means cave bear yeah. had a specially, yeah. specially yeah. position. Ca a fost sau n-a fost un cult Aia nimeni nu Dacă poate. a fost cult sau nu, da, nu, nu pot să afirm cu maximă precizie. Dar omul a fost acolo, da, tu, ai, fost găsit, acolo. A fost tu acolo. ai găsit la mel da. aia de, da. de mamut, de ma da. molar de mamut. Da. Care era în fiecare care... vârful unei movile de argilă. Exact, aia, și... aia a fost un indiciu da. foarte clar că omul preistoric da. a, a călcat da. în galerie. Da. It's very difficult, I think, for us to nowadays to try to put ourselves in, um, you know, Neanderthal. What were they thinking? What was their culture like? What was their mindset? What was their worldview? The Neanderthals lived in Eurasia, sharing the land in caves with the cave bears who outnumbered them. The Neanderthals had large brains, sometimes larger than ours, and displayed a variety of symbolic behaviors such as body painting and decoration with necklaces and feathers. They also had a language of their own and lived in complex social groups in which they took care of the sick and buried their dead. Recurgem la mijloacele noastre moderne. Neanderthal hunters lived in the Apusini Mountains near the Cold Cave. Three footprints were found deep inside Vartop Cave and are the most accurately dated footprints in the world. A Neanderthal entered 62,000 years ago looking for shelter in spite of possibly encountering the biggest cave bears in the world. The Neanderthal was about the uh, one meter 46 centimeters yeah so, so pretty short pretty short probably short robust. robust heavy uh, 
they removed one for the yes. museum for the um, collections and then there were two more but those were later vandalized mm -hmm. if we look here this is um, this is about 55 centimeters across at the low, high, um, longest point. There are some rumors that one of the last two, which were removed by vandalists, it was uh, discovered to be in a private collection in France. Very unusual, and we do, do know it was here somewhere. We leave now our footprints here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but these aren't going to be preserved in 60,000 years. <laughs> in the place where we found the formation, the cross formation, the right. uh, uh, cave bear deposit, we are very close to the opposite side of the mountain. Robert, mm -hmm. here is the spring. So that water comes from cold cave? I'm going to come feet first. Do you think that'll work? Yes, sure. One more meter and you are in. And here in this hole is a mixture of, you see, clay. Mm -hmm. and over covering that clay is a layer of calcite, hard calcite, and beneath there are gravels and debris, limestone debris, in a mixture with cave bear bones. Yeah. So I can see some oh. cave bear cemetery is not very far from here. Yes. Oh. The entrance we used to explore the cave mm -hmm. is very far, is beyond all that limestone hill. Oh. So we have to imagine that 70. 5,000 years ago, right. the Neanderthalian used this entrance or another one somewhere here because the yeah. men and the men used this entrance or, the, or another one. If the Neanderthalians went there and made the arrangement of bones, doesn't matter whether an worship or not, right. but anyway, they went there and we know that for sure, because we, we found also that piece of mammoths, probably they couldn't go too far in the cave right. because of light, yes? Right. And, uh, Unless they were using torches or something like that. Okay, even so, right. not very far. Yeah. Yes. Look, it is another, another den. It's very shallow. And here, my left. Beneath the wall, it is another one which is pretty deep, 50 centimeters, I think. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they use the topography of the gary, the morphology of the walls, mm -hmm. in order to manage better dens. More isolated, probably they got more protection in such dens. Do modern bears make any kind of um, dens like this? Oh, uh, yes, yes, they do. I mean, they do. Could some of this be Not wrong? in caves, but I've seen. Man and bear have coexisted since time immemorial. In Churizbuk Cave, in the same region as the Cold and Vartop Caves, over 400 footprints of three Neanderthals were found a male, a female, and a child alongside the prince of a cave bear. The footprints are estimated to be 37,000 years old. Anyone who has roamed the unexplored parts of the world knows that the best plan to move is to follow game tracks. It is highly probable that Neanderthal man, who was a food collector and above all a hunter, followed in the wake of his game to various parts of Europe and Asia. But the life of a nomad requires a great deal of skill, endurance, and courage.
In Drakalok Cave in the Swiss Alps, at an altitude of over 2400 meters, archaeologist Emil Bockler discovered in the 1920s cave bear skulls arranged in positions assumed to be made by Neanderthals who inhabited the cave. Various stone tools, worked bone, as well as cut marks on some of the bear bones, indicate evidence of human interaction with bears. His discoveries supported the idea of ancient alpine cave bear worship. Mircea Eliade, discussing about these evidences, which produce a lot of controversy and debates yeah, and so on, yeah. he said, okay, we must, when we can't read some very old proofs, uh -huh. he mentioned the opacity, he said, who can say what that Neanderthalian had in mind right, when right, he did right. one thing or another one. Yeah. He said the anthropological and ethnological uh, method can help us a lot. Mm -hmm. According to Mircea Eliade, the same type of economy is producing the same type of culture. That doesn't matter in time and in space. Right. Hunting the bear with a spear is an extremely dangerous undertaking because the spear had to be thrust into the animal's heart from very close quarters. Most of the cave bear skulls from Cold Cave are from young bears. Perhaps the Neanderthal man found it easier to kill the young, or perhaps the younger bears were hunted during some type of initiation rite for young hunters. In Montespan Cave in France, speleologist Norbert Castoret discovered in the depths of the cave a clay statue of a bear made more than 20,000 years ago. There were human footprints next to the statue, as well as the remains of a prehistoric dance ritual. The bear had been impaled by numerous arrows and stones. The statue was headless, but nearby was a cave bear skull. The statue used during rituals was draped over with a bear skin that probably had a cave bear head or skull attached to it. It is considered to be the oldest statue in the world. Drawings made by Cro-Magnon artists more than 15,000 years ago were discovered in Trois Frères Cave in France. The drawing of a bear, stabbed by arrows and stones and spitting blood, depicted a prehistoric bear hunting ritual. Bear bones that were found in the cold cave here uh, belong to juvenile bears. Uh, this skull, for example, uh, is both small and uh, shows evidence that the teeth are still teeth of a juvenile bear. It was a complicated, complex yeah. interaction between yeah. cave bears and Neanderthals that would be very hard for us to understand at this point because both are extinct. Right, 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 right. But I, I mean, for me personally, the more evidence I look at, the more we look at all the different pieces, it seems to me that there is more and more evidence, should we say, of a very strong Neanderthal cave bear interaction almost to the point that I'm thinking, and I use this word loosely, but sort of a codependence of yes. interaction yeah. between the two that... One species near the other, other species. in order to not only survive, but develop to and develop grow to and stay, yeah, to be strong. And maintain a certain yeah. level yeah. of yeah. culture. Right, exactly. Not unlike, and that's demonstrated ecologically in many other situations where you need both the predator and the prey. Acești uh, neandertaliani aveau un fel de venerație pentru urs. Ursul nu era un simplu vânat, cum ar fi fost cerbu sau caprele sau. Era un fel de frate al omului. Astea sunt niște deducții nu sunt date certe științifice. Problema e că 
un cult al ursului s-a practicat la populații de vânători de urși până în secolul 20, în special în zona circumsiberiană. Deci au fost Ainu, în extremul orient, acolo Japonia, au fost ghiliacii, au fost iacuții, au fost buriații, deci vânători de urși care fiecare a avut un fel de, de cult, un fel de uh, ritual de cinstirea vânatului. Da? Puneau capetele niște pari sau făceau niște aranjamente de crani și cu oase, pieile lor, dansuri. Humankind and its societies seem haunted by the memory of the ancient times when space and prey were shared with bears, when they had the same fears and the same caves, sometimes the same dreams and the same beds. Humans and bears have always been inseparable, united by a kinship that gradually moved from nature to culture. The bones and remains of the bear, especially the skull, were deposited in a very sacred place. In the 1880s, Swedish explorer Niels Nordenskold discovered in Antarctica on the northwest coast of the Yamal Peninsula, a sacrificial altar made by the Samoyeds. The altar was built of numerous bear skulls and reindeer bones. Nearby was a hearth containing ashes and traces of a recent sacrificial feast. It is the supernatural essence that is desired, not the animal itself. The bear is a mediator between this world and the spiritual world. Up until the 20th century, the Sami of Scandinavia took the oath for legal proceedings not on the Bible, but on a bear's skull. The same applies for the Yakuts who sat on a bear's skull while taking an oath. Certain tribes of the Altai Mountains called upon bears as witnesses to their oaths. There appears to be an older, Arctic culture that sacrifices bear skulls directly to a supreme being, and a younger, sub-Arctic culture performing bear ceremonies, using the bear as a mediator to communicate with God. A live bear cannot be sent to the sacred heights, but a dead bear's soul can wing its way to the place where the fate of the tribe is decided. The bear is not sacrificed as during the time of Neanderthal man, but rather is dispatched on a sacred mission. The body of the animal, the head and the skin were the focus of ceremonial attention there is also a decorative aspect used to dress up the creature. The ceremonies are usually part of a communal feast or celebration. These types of bear rituals are no longer held. The ancient ways, such as following the reindeer herds, occurred when humans believed all things to be animated by spirits. Humanity's relationship with the forces of nature was viewed quite differently from our current empirical model. Industrial societies limited first-hand interaction with the natural world led to the objectification of non-human animals. Our observations are now understood in terms of instincts, reflexes, environmental adaptations, and above all, an assumption of superiority. But ancient tribes that worshiped the bear had a different conception of the natural worlds that was based 
not only on utility, but also on metaphysical ideas that were woven into the fabric of everyday life. In some North American tribes, there is a great reverence for the bear above all animals. The first bear killed in the hunting season receives special attention. There are also bear dances to appease the animal before it emerges from winter hibernation. Rarely undertaken, modern bear hunting is strictly regulated for this animal, so sympathetic in appearance and so human in intelligence. He inspires both fear and respect among the ethnic communities of Siberia. It is taboo to use the ordinary word for the bear, and pseudonyms are used, such as the old man of the forest, grandfather, master of the taiga. Siberian tribes, such as the Yakuts, call the bear beloved uncle, the lord, worthy old man, the Tungus call the bear an old man, grandfather. The ancient Finns call the bear illustrious, master. The ancient Laps call the bear old man with a fur garment. Among all tribes inhabiting northern forests of both America and Eurasia, there is a custom of talking to the bear before or after it's killed. In some tribes, there are mourning songs after the bear is killed in hunt. You died first, you greatest of all animals. We respect you and will treat you accordingly. May the lesser animals all follow you. Despite wide variation between the two cultures, the ceremonies of both the Geliacs and the Ainu last for days and nights. The bear is an intermediary force between mortals and the owners of the mountain. The festivals take place in wintertime. Cubs are captured in the forest, brought back to the village, and kept in cages for two to three years. The animal is treated as a most honored guest. Other Siberian populations nearby such as the Gold and the Iroki, also have bear festivals. For the Ainu, the slaughter of the bear represents the departure of the soul of the animal to its master. Later, it's expected to return to Earth, thereby completing a vital cycle central to the Ainu mind. In the Yamua region of Siberia, it is customary to have post-mortem rites after killing a bear. The head and the skin are brought back to the village. It is a triumphal reception with music and solemn ceremony. The successful hunter arrives wearing the skin of the bear. He is followed by a drum beater. Warriors of ancient Europe such as the Celts, Germans, and Vikings, used the bear as a symbol of courage and bravery. For Germans and for Goths, the bear was the embodiment of strength. For young men, it was an obligatory rite of passage for admission into the world of adulthood to fight and defeat a bear. For these rituals, the young men had to disguise themselves using the skin of a bear. The Christian church declared war on the bear to eliminate it from the European forests 
so that these bloody and pagan rituals would be exterminated. Thousands of bears were killed across Europe. It was a huge massacre. Luckily, Carpathia was one of the few places in Europe that remained an oasis of life for the survival of the persecuted bears. It is no wonder that traces of ancient practice are still preserved today. People who love bears come here, says Mihai Virel, one of the captains of the bear groups. For the last 50 years, he has helped preserve an ancient tradition, a connection between man and bear. The dancing groups of bears are formed by the bears themselves, followed by drum beaters. There are over a hundred people and over 30 bears. This ancient tradition starts on the 27th of December following Christmas. It is a prehistoric ritual an initiation for boys into manhood. Before, it was the actual hunt of the bear that was believed to be a most noble and dangerous pursuit. This hunting of the bear is associated with the veneration and the worship of the animal. Modern bear festivals became important after the hunt as a means for the community to gather together. I spent time walking in the, in the Carpathian Mountains, talking to as many shepherds uh, and bocce chief shepherds as I could. Particularly older shepherds would tell me, ah, oh, the bear, I love the bear. The bear is inconvenient, the bear can be dangerous, but the bear is important. The bear is Padwaba Paduri. Padwaba Paduri, the treasure of the forest, right? The old pagan festivals associated with the bear were probably so important in the spiritual life of our ancestors that they could not be replaced by the official and harsh reforms imposed by the Christian church. Ursul, prin cum arată el și comportamentul lui, e considerat un frate al omului. Îl vânau, dar îl respectau. Și această, această chestie se întâlnește și în... Uh, Antropologia românească, în etnologia românească, ursul e un personaj special care e privit cu simpatie, e Moș Martin, care Moș Martin e un fel de un cheș simpatic, plus tot felul de tradiții legate de urs, mergând până la dansul ursului încă perpetuat asta. Te-am întâlnit, era la capul podului, a dormit, mi-am cu un băiat, am dormit ieri, lui era frică, nu mai fusese la munte până atunci, și am dormit, area pe cealaltă, pata oilor, și noaptea m-am trezit la trau câinii, crema de azi, bă, sunt măgari, că măgarii ieșeau să stau pe pod, pe pod acolo, pe deja, că stau, a venit, s-a repede tot, a venit oile spre mine, mi-am dat seama, gata, e ursul. Oile speriate, a fugit, a trebuit pe mine, m-am arăcat cu jocul din spinare și cu buita, doi, doi în fața m-am venit pe strada, cinci, șase, bete, cu el în fața mea. U, am doi, cu buita, cu pietre, cu ce am putut, m-au, n-am avut treabă cu mine, m-au acolit și el după oi. A ajuns la grămiturile în izvor, că era izvorile mari, primăvara, am topit-o zăpezilor, n-a putut trece repede. Ui, și acolo. Mi-au omorât două și mi-a gărănit vreo cinci. Patru, cinci de când le, 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 nu le-a putut prinde, le-a gărănit așa. Și două le-au le omorât și era pe ele, în izvor, acolo le prinsese, se rupea din ele și aruncam o meală la câini. Printre că când m-am apropiat, m-am spus, stai ce pomul ăla, patru, cinci metri de el, mi-a aruncat și mie, a dat cu ceva mine. O bucată de carne. Să se doresc, mi-a aruncat. Arunca la câini da, ca să îi da. păcălească. Ea rămânească. să mănânce carnea rămânească. și să lase da, pe el. Rămâne un câine care da. nu sunt credincioși. Nu-s proșturi și ăștia așa. Niciodată, pe prima dată ursul când s-a luat, aia îi sparge burta. Una o ușurează de-o poate duce el, îi dă mațele afară, și lasă și mămeală la câini și o duce și el mai ușor. În romanian tradition, the bear is called old man. He has human attributes. He is intelligent. He builds his own winter dwelling. He has the ability to foretell cold and hot weather. 
there is only one thing he doesn't know. Fire. In the Carpathians and Balkans of the present day, Ursine rituals are performed in the depths of wintertime to hasten the return of spring and fertility. In Vintiliaska, the day before New Year's Eve, a group of mass people go from home to home. There are over 30 people in the group. They dance, sing, and act out the resurrection of the bear. metaphor for regenerating time, a passing from one year to the next. The leader of the group believes that in 10 to 15 years, this tradition will be lost. In Krasna, a Romanian village in the Ukraine, the bears are made of hay. Some of the bears look like hearts, others look like birds or butterflies. This is a very archaic tradition, according to the locals. And no one really knows when or how it originated. Many boys are proud to be part of this ritual, and they wait for it the whole year. A zice că ar fi bine să nu mai fie urși, cumva. Sau să, cum? să dispară specia asta de la noi. Da, fiecare și-ar viza, și viza interesul, dar hai că ținem cont pentru faună, pentru altele care poate sunt unele și beneficii care le aduc prin... Au și oricare răpitoare care se hrănesc cu șoare și cu toate. Toate au rostul lor în... Cred că cine le-a creat, le-a creat cu un scop, anume. Ce ar însemna munții ăștia ai noștri fără urși? Adventure. Adventure, yeah, is very important. And another way of thinking about this. What if, we can say, what if there were no big predators? What if there were no bears, no, no lions, no tigers, um, no crocodiles? Wouldn't the earth be a safer and health, healthier place to live? Well, in the, in the most boring sense, yes. Uh, but we need adventure. We need challenge. We need test. We, need, we even need fear. We're not immune 
to the dangers and the interactions and the realities of the natural world. We're not separate from the natural world. We're not somehow above the natural world. The large predators that impose top-down regulation have been extirpated from most of the continental United States and indeed much of Earth's terrestrial realm. What they were applying was ecological meltdown is coming soon to an ecosystem near you. Scary. Yeah. Um, it's scary because most people don't, don't know, don't see. Most people don't, no. If the, if the politicians and the bureaucrats who control Romanians, Romania's forests allow big patches of forest to be sold away to private corporations and cut for timber, then Romania is no longer going to be the greatest refuge for brown bears in Europe, which it was when I was there. It was the greatest refuge for brown bears in Europe by far. And it would be a tragedy for Romania to lose that. But when you walk in a forest and you know that there are tigers there, or you know that there are grizzly bears there, or if you're in Romania, you know that there are brown bears there, um, then it, the forest itself feels different. It feels bigger, more complicated, scarier, more magical. wilder. That's important. That's valuable. That's precious, I think. We should not forget that from the beginning, humans and animals, especially big predators like bears, they've always been linked in their history. And all of a sudden, you have this disappearance, you know. That's right, yeah. And you have to ask yourself, what's going to happen to the human life on so many levels, psychologically, What is going to happen? What is going to happen? Yeah, when they disappear from the wild. We don't know for sure that they're going to disappear from the wild. We hope that they're not going to disappear from the wild. But it looks more and more like they will. I mean, the population projections of, from the United Nations Population um, Bureau are that we're going to expand to, I think it's about 11 billion people on this planet before our population levels off in the middle of the, um, of the 22nd century. 11 billion humans. If there are 11 billion humans on this planet, it's very difficult to imagine how there can be viable populations of big predators in the wild. There's just not going to be enough room for them. More than likely, a bear cult was a characteristic feature of an ancient boreal culture associated with the pursuit of the reindeer. This culture spread to become intercontinental, spanning from Labrador to Lapland. As the culture spread, perhaps out of the necessity of following the reindeer migration, the original traits, including the veneration of the bear and the simple rites connected with hunting this animal, became widely diffused and radically modified. This hypothesis accounts for differences in customs, as well as for underlying trends and similarities. The Sami, the ancient Finns, the Tungus, the Geliacs, and various other tribes of Siberia, the Ainu of Japan, and North American groups all derive this belief from the bear cult of prehistoric times. It was a very long process that took tens of thousands of years of modification, differentiation, and assimilation. No other animal has attained such a universal prominence as the bear, nor has been associated with such a wide geographical area and such a large series of customs. It is the oldest, and most spiritual relationship man has ever had with an animal.
someday, the brown bears will also roam the burial grounds of the forests for the last time, lay themselves down in some lonely place, and send their souls up to the stars. Killing the bear, his fellow creature, his kinsman, his first god, man long ago killed his own memory, and even symbolically killed himself. It is now too late to turn back the clock. Unlike the cave bear that went extinct due to natural causes, the extinction of the brown, polar, and grizzly bear will be due to us. We have destroyed its habitat, and in the process we are losing the greatest spiritual bond that ever was between humans and animals. It is estimated that in about 150 years from now, the bears of the world will be either extinct or on the verge of extinction. United Nations reports estimate that by 2114, Panda and polar bear will be extinct. The grizzly and the brown bear are estimated to be the last to hold on to life. By 2164, the remaining populations will be only in northern Siberia. So it makes me think of the Neanderthals. Why did they disappear? And you know, you get these cultures and you get these groups of people that lasted for thousands of years, or in the case of Neanderthals, tens of thousands of years, yet they go extinct. They yeah. disappear. Yeah, well, it was because of so uh, rapid change, change of environment, environment. I think environment and the uh, competition and with the modern man. Yeah, that's so what... Uh, that doesn't mean so big wars between or no, in no, this no. kind, but competition, competition could be ecological. You can make a uh, Comparison probably exactly as uh, uh, Ursus Arctos, the modern bear, mm -hmm. was a serious competitor for cave bear. Yeah. Because he said some advantages, uh, better uh, reproductivity, and were more adapted for the new environment after exactly. the glaciation. Exactly. And so, probably was the same Something the somehow same with the Neanderthalian and Sapien yeah. Sapien. Yeah. Neanderthal man was sacrificing bear skulls 80,000 years ago. 30,000 years ago, things took quite a different turn. Man no longer sacrificed the most precious parts of the animal to God. The killing of the animal became a ritual ceremony for a once dynamic bear cult. This cult must have been the focal point of religious life, but man no longer confronted his God face to face. Now it was a third party a very man-like animal, the bear being ritually killed, occupying the role of mediator between man and God. Miraculously, both the sacrifice and cult aspects were preserved until the middle of the 20th century in the tribes of the Arctic regions and in regions of the world such as the Carpathian Mountains that, due to their history, were less affected by modernization and globalization. Had the same the same basic yeah. problems as we had now. Yeah. Swing between food and food. spirit. Yeah, yes. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, sort of the material and spiritual. You have to survive. But you need a reason to survive. And if they're only surviving in zoos, then we'll have lost something very, very important, both ecologically and psychologically, I think. Yes, because you don't have the the relation. You don't have the hunt anymore. You don't have the challenge. You don't, you don't have the have, hunt. You don't have the challenge. You, you have don't a very comfortable relationship if it's just in the zoo. It's yes. just something. You don't have the looking. fear. You don't have the reminder of humility. You don't have any of those things. Yeah. 
which made us which make us human in a way this these traits make us you know our characters the bear cult existed inside the caves the cathedrals of the stone age one important question remains what will await us Uite așa probabil, așa, ghemurit, colac, cu genunchii cam la gură, era, era destul de incomod. <fie> 